Uh, we just finished uh, talking with Sheriff Nate Harmon regarding the public nuisance ordinance, and now in studio, County Council President Jim Whitaker. Whit, good to see you again. Good morning. Thanks for coming in so much. Yes, indeed. Thank you all for the host. And uh, also... County Administrator Alan Davis, AD. Good to see. You. Good morning. Good to be here. T- twice in in a week. And the best. That's a lot. Best dressed man in the county. Look at that tie and shirt. Looking and good. Nate. Nate was got. Nate had the tie on today too. He did. Yeah. He yeah. looked impressive. Bill, you've got the jacket, but I noticed no tie. No tie. No tie. Yeah. No tie for me either. Yeah. And uh, Jim. Looking robust as ever, baby. Well, I tell you what, I, I dressed for the radio. That is sure. <laughs> then we stick the camera in your face and put you on TV. I, I can't hide it. You know, you just I just got to go with it right now. Well, let's talk about this public nuisance ordinance, which has gotten uh, so much attention, especially on our Facebook page today. And uh, from the council perspective, and Alan, uh, from the administrator's uh, perspective, what were you hoping to accomplish with the nuisance ordinance, and where do you go from here now that it's uh, kind of been stopped in its tracks for the time being? Well, I I, I would like to think that uh, the public opinion has already been out there, so there's not really much needed for a public hearing. And if there was a public hearing, it would not have been enacted on, you know, at that point. So we we like to digest everything to make sure that we're – you know, we've got the pulse of the community, and 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 you know, and and Bill Bill will will remember we we used to have the safe and clean ordinance, which was was similar but but different. Um, the, the intent is 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 not to, to overregulate. You mm-hmm. know, I've been with the county for for eighteen years, and and I've got to give this public body credit. Um, everything has been above the board. Everything has always been very transparent and. And, and Bill, you know, really led the, the charge on that. Um, you know, the, the philosophy is if, you, if you've got nothing to hide, why not, you know, be above board with everything? So, um, you know, there's, there's been a number of complaints since the, the sheriff has been on board for the past two years. Some, some blighted properties. Um, we had an, an establishment down in, in South Berkeley um, where, um, you know, and, and, and the sheriff, I'm sure the sheriff has, has all the statistics on the number of, of law enforcement and ambulance calls that have been, been made to there, uh, in 21 and, and 20, 2021 and 22. The, the, the council's intent was never to, to infringe on everyone's property rights. That, you know, they, that, that was the, the farthest thing from their minds. It, it was just a tool. Um, to, to work with law enforcement, to work with our engineering department, um, to, to deal with some of these these these, pub, these uh, uh, problem properties. I call it um, a blight. Yeah, a blighted, blighted properties. I mean, we we had a, for example, we we had a property uh, in in North Berkeley um, where it was a, a the property was owned by uh, by someone out of state. But they had decided to lease the property to to someone else who used it um, to uh, to dump old refrigerators and freezers and cars and things like that right next to to, to residents. Hmm. In the absence of of zoning and, and some of the other tools, um, it was difficult for us to have that property cleaned up. We eventually did. Um, but it, it was a matter of going to circuit court and you know tracking down the property owner. Uh, all the all the council really wanted to do was was clean up some of the blighted property, some of the problem properties. It was not. It was, you know, and it, and it started out. And Bill knows how this happens. It started out as a very simple document, and then we we sent it to our engineers, and they said, well, let's let's add this and this, and we were okay until it got to the attorneys. <laughs> 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 you know, and I can't even blame Norwood for this. Um, you know, but he's convenient. He's yeah, convenient. he was. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure somewhere along the way he had some input. Um, you know, and then suddenly it was well, let's let's do this and let's do that. And and I think you know at that point the the, the document kind of took on a life of its own. So, um, you know, we have always any time that we've we've tried to enact a, a, an ordinance, we've the, the, although it's not required. Um, the, the commission and, and now the council has always had a public hearing for for input uh, to solicit public input. Once we once we posted the class one legal ad and, and made the notification of the public hearing and, and posted the the proposed nuisance ordinance on our website and, and got it on social media, as you know, 
this council certainly got yeah. public feedback, and it wasn't all negative. Um, but you know, I think at that point they said, "Well, let's step back. Let's let's kind of revisit this." Um, not to say that sometime in the future a simplified version um, won't be proposed, but I don't think there's any intent in the, in the immediate future to revisit it. I think social media is probably going to be the new public hearing. Yeah, <laughs> you're probably right, well, Jim. Uh, yeah, um, but, that can be very unfortunate yeah. though because it only takes. A couple of people moving comments in a certain direction, one way or the other, to influence the rest of the herd. Yep, you're right. Let me pick up a second, uh, Alan, <clears throat> on the fact that the example you used of uh, someone coming in and collecting dump, uh, collecting trash and dumping on a property. DEP is generally the source for cleaning up a lot of these properties, unless there has been a profit motive somewhere down the line. If there's been a profit motive, then DEP will not do it. Right. DEP's great at uh, addressing open dumps and the like where somebody goes along the side of the road and throws off a, a, a refrigerator or a couch, whatever the case may be. But if there's any evidence at all that someone's made some money in bringing that trash to a property, then you have to right. do what you, what you had to do. You had to go to court to get a resolution. You cannot depend upon DEP. And, and, and DEP it has been very they, – they've worked hand-in-glove yeah. with us. Keith Allison, yeah. I don't know if, yeah. you, if you know Keith or not. He was with the health department. He's now with DEP. He does a great job. And, um, in fact, um, just last week he, there was an, an, an incident that, that we knew, an instance that was going to be coming before the council in – uh, during public comment, and we ask Keith to come in, and, and he makes himself available. But um, the DEP, like a lot of the state agencies, are they're staffed pretty thin, and he's covering uh, you know four, five, six, seven county area, so he can't always be uh, available when when we need him. But um, Keith has done a, a great job for us, and DEP has worked very hard, worked very very well he with has, us. Yeah. Now he's a gentleman that uh, umpires uh, little league baseball, is not uh, actually uh, uh, the th- World yes, Series at Williamsport. He's, yeah. he's umpired one of the, some of those games. So. Hey, there's there's a, a comment here that I wanted to read from you from Doreen Schaffner. It says, Facebook does not give you the pulse of the community. I love the ability it gives me to stay in touch with so many people, but I hate the ability a small number of people have to turn it into a very negative forum, which I, th- I think was part of what I was referencing when I said, that let's mm-hmm. hope social media is not the new town hall, uh, for instance. And, and the other aspect of, of social media is, you may have people who aren't even in the zip codes that are affected by the ordinance who might just be people who kind of, whenever they see a certain issue of, of a certain style of policy or governance that comes up, they float from 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 social media page to social media page trying to influence what's going on, and they don't even live in the zip code where the ordinance is, is being enacted. Uh, so let's hope social media is not the new town hall Jim, because when you hold a town hall, you got to look eye to eye with yep. your neighbors, and you got to talk to them. Yeah, that might have been a bad reference, but you can you can pretty much pick up on a pulse of of what would lead to the town hall, mm-hmm. you know, in the direction that that it would probably go. And, and my friends and family would tell you, I've never ever had a Facebook page mm-hmm. ever in my life. I don't go on Facebook. Um, every once in a while, my family will come and say, hey, you want to hear what Bill Stubblefield just said about you on Facebook? Because <laughs> he's known to throw yeah, some yeah. Yeah. Right. And some I'll say, real bomb. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I don't. You know, I, it, it's, it's, it's a great tool to, to connect with, with, you know, maybe some folks that you haven't seen in a very long time. But, mm-hmm. I, you know, they'll, it, it happens all the time. They'll come and say, well, so-and-so was just said this on Facebook. And I said, well, you know, if it's on Facebook, it must be true. Let me give you folks credit, uh, as I do, uh, Alan, uh, uh, on Facebook and off Facebook, uh, except through campaigns when the, the most easy campaign rhetoric for Challenger is, I'm going to make the county more transparent. Everybody does that. That's mm-hmm. what – it's a standard argument. I think the county does a good job of being transparent. Uh, you folks, you appear uh, on on the uh, the local radio shows. You uh, your fa- you you do you broadcast your meetings, you <coughs> televise your meetings. Uh, so you do a good job, I think, of being transparent. Well, and and you know, and I give a lot of that credit to 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 you and Doug Copenhaver and, and some others. I mean, you've never ever backed away from a controversial mm-hmm. issue. And, um, you know, one of the things I've enjoyed uh, most about working with with this council is 
um, the integrity. Um, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. You you know, once you once you make a decision, you know, you're you're willing to to come to to R and R or or wherever it be, you know, public forum to to explain that decision. And that that's not always that's not always the case. Hey, I got a question for you, Jim uh, Whitaker, president of the uh, county council. You said at this point, with the feedback we've got, there's no need to revisit this public ordinance issue, uh, public nuisance ordinance issue at the moment. Did I understand that correctly? Uh, we will revisit it, uh, probably make changes if we need to, but I don't see it being enacted anytime soon in its present form. And before you go there, Bill, yep. uh, just in talking with Sheriff Nate Harmon, mm-hmm. it sounds to me like you would like to pursue this with some town halls to try to work out the kinks and get something going that makes enacting uh, or, or enforcing law a little easier for the Sheriff's Department in Berkeley County. That would be a, the, the ultimate intent. I do believe that, like I said, if, if there's a blight out there in the community that we need to, to address or fix, then, then that's what I hope we can do with and, an and, ordinance. In the current state of things, if it's it's my property, I have the right to do what I want to do on my private property, and, and you do un, until it, it affects the safety of the community uh, or the health of, of your next-door neighbors. For instance, the example Nate gave of, I'm going to take my toilet and I'm going to dump it right on the property line between my neighbor's property and, and my property. I, I would hope that there's already something on the books that I can report that and it gets taken care of immediately as opposed to three years of lawsuits, complaints, and, and, and yeah. warrants. There would be um, something through the health department ordinance through the sanitarian's office. If there is an open and obvious uh, instance being committed then you know the health department would be involved to to i guess address that issue first there are some septic systems that fail that that, you know there's no intent of the homeowner to to damage the neighbor's property but sometimes the leachate could you know transfer over so you know if that's the case the health department's there to work in conjunction with the homeowner to to fix the issue and and get it addressed so there's no harm done to your neighbor that's, yeah. that's one thing. Uh, you're picking up on what you were talking about a second ago, Rob. Uh, the impression I got from uh, the sheriff is that uh, the ordinance probably got too large, too complex. Would you think about revisiting it and breaking it into various parts, Jim? I would and, think that would probably be an obvious yeah. direction to go in. Certainly the one, the, the original objective, objective to, to yes. address this, uh, uh, this club that... But kind of bypasses ABC. So, yes. Yeah. yeah, that would be that would be the the most objective intent to I think that we should do. Yeah. Yeah, Alan, uh, refresh me. Uh, uh, we one time had a lady worked in planning uh, uh, planning engineering. Donna Shire, I think her name was. Siler. Siler. Thank you. Right. Uh, she uh, uh, she addressed a lot of these issues, uh, but did she address it under the umbrella of an ordinance or just uh, work in encouragement individuals to clean up? No, Bill, if you remember, we had a we at that time we called it a safe and clean yes. ordinance, yeah. and it was under that that ordinance. Um, and th- again, that was a that was another document that had been put in place that. Um, you know, we used it for a couple of years, and uh, the, the decision was made that it it, it really wasn't um, as effective as, as we had intended, so we stepped back from that. Um, you know, we, we do have, you know, subdivision regulations that, that we can use. Um, you know, we do have regulations through the health department. We do have, um, you know, the assistance of the DEP. This is not to say that in the absence of this of this nuisance ordinance, this nuisance property ordinance, that nothing will be done. Um, our our engineering and permitting department probably two or three times a week gets complaints about you know property maintenance issues, and and we will send someone out to to look at it. Um, but you know sometimes you know and, and, and you know a lot of times it's just a matter of knocking on someone's door and say listen. You know, you've got, you know, a year's worth of, of trash piled up in your garage. Can you get it cleaned up? And they will. But then there are other instances where, you know, we have to go to the courts to, to, to actually, you know, we're, believe it or not, we are here to help the, the constituency of the, of the county. We, you know, I don't, I don't want to live beside a, you know, a, a, a garbage pit and neither to you. Um, so, you know, we, we want to get it cleaned up. So I, I think this was just the intent to take the, the truly, the, the, the properties that, that, that um, 
are, are a true nuisance to the community and, and try to get them cleaned up. Bill, you remember a couple of years ago what we went, went through with, the, with trying to get the strip clubs cleaned up. Exactly. That, yes. you know, at, at one time, you know, 15 years ago, this was kind of the strip club capital of, of West Virginia. Mm-hmm. And, and we've enacted some, some real positive steps to try to, to clean that up. Um, you know, we want people to want to live here. We want to be people people to be proud of of the county and and and, and of their property and get along with their neighbors. And I, the intent was never to overregulate. It just, as I said, the document as it was being passed around just kind of took on a, a, a life of its own and um, it became much more complex than it ever had yeah. to be. Yeah. Were most of these things, if not all of them, already items that are laws on the books that have been addressed? Um, yes and no. Um, it, it, it more clearly defined, um, you know, some of the, the, uh, uh, the, some of the, the areas that the county has authority over, but then it also, it also gave law enforcement, um, you know, some of the, some authority that they, they currently don't have. You know, the, the city of Martinsburg has a very effect, effective nuisance regulation where, you know, if you get multiple complaints because you think there's a, a drug house next door to you, mm-hmm. the city of Martinsburg can take action against that, and they do. You know, they'll go in and investigate, and they'll shut down, you know, the, the operation. We don't have that same that same authority. So, again, the the intent was never to infringe on anyone's property rights. It was just to... To, to address that, you know, the small minority of issues that, that we have that, unfortunately, um, you, know, are, you know, are a nuisance. The example you gave there, Alan, I, I need a little more clarification on that because I know Martinsburg passed that ordinance. I remember when Mari Richards was the police chief, every couple of weeks there'd be another press release about we shut down this many drug houses. And thanks to this ordinance that the city of Martinsburg enacted, we can do this. And I, I confess, I, I never really understood what the ordinance did above and beyond what the law says, which is that selling drugs is illegal. So what would prevent you if I said to you, listen, hey, uh, you know, there's a place next door to me and you know, the cars are coming and going all hours of the night, and I've seen drug transactions take place. What would prevent you from sending the sheriff there, or if I just called the sheriff and said, investigate this, even though there's no ordinance like the city of Martinsburg has? It would seem to me the law's on the books to shut that down already. Well, I, 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 think, I think you can to a certain degree. Um, I think what this, the, public, the nuisance ordinance did was just clarify exactly what, what the responsibilities of each agency was. If it was a rental community or a rental house that, mm-hmm. that was taking place, you know, for, for a neighbor to, to accuse and want to come out publicly and accuse what was taking place there, I think could be part of a liability to the to that neighbor who's Could who's cost you your life. Could Yeah. So you, I think there's a certain caution that maybe a neighbor might do is just for that retaliation part of it. And I think this ordinance would, would take that retaliation part out that would give us the the ability to go in and make the necessary, um, oh, what's the word I want to use, discriminatory yeah. action. Is there still a vicious dog ordinance in the county? Bill, you, mm-hmm. you know, you know, and, and I just told someone recently that, that the two more most painful things that I've seen the council ha- have to do is get involved in the settlement of estates, and you've seen families yeah. torn apart over you know, estates that really don't. I used to dread those. Yeah, <laughs> with the but I also know yeah. you used to to yeah. dread the nuisance. Exactly. The yeah. nuisance appeal. Um, that that ordinance was changed by code several years ago. That the council no longer has that responsibility. Um, it it now goes directly to circuit court. Okay. There's, so there's all also, the more reason for you to come back as, 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 a, as, a, as counsel, because you wouldn't have to deal with that anymore. <laughs> Too old. Well, there's also another avenue to that, that, yeah. that if they have a vicious animal, yeah. that, you know, the, the insurance industry will, they have a list of dogs that are considered vicious. But at the same time, if they say that is an ESA, um, emotional support animal, they can claim it. And there's not really, I mean, the, the law hasn't been defined delicately enough to say that's a vicious dog and that is not required as a ESA. Mm. So, you know, there's there's 
I've got firsthand experience on that one, believe me, and it's not pleasant. But I know how difficult it was for the council at times to make the decision to have a dog put down. And it was very emotional. Very I, emotional. That's yeah. Right, yeah. I, you know, Robert, I'll tell you a story about Billy. He probably doesn't want anybody to know. <laughs> when he was on council um, regularly, if not weekly, regularly, he would go down to animal control for the, for the dogs that were impounded down there and take them, take them treats. I believe that because he brings me treats. Yeah. Too. He, he treats me the he, same way. He never did it with staff. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you know, you know I, I, sti- I still, I still do that, Alan. Do you? I, I the the poor animals. They have all been mistreated. Uh, uh, at least the vast majority have been. And um, um, when I was a kid, a dog was an outside dog. You, you never came inside the house. As I've gotten older, the dogs have come inside the house, and I realize they and, have personalities. And, and, they have pain. They suffer, and uh, they they're an extension of society. So, and yeah, Tess, and Tess has a great home. Tess has a great home. Yeah, <laughs> but I I still do take uh, biscuits down to the animal. Unfortunately, that means that Bonnie's no longer allowed in the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The dogs have moved in. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. no, 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 no. We don't go there yeah. at all. <laughs> you don't, Bonnie, if you're uh, listening, uh, that's Rob. Right. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I'd like to see Bill try that. Um, you know, there's a, nice. there's a bunch of us that would probably take a six pack of beer with lawn chairs and sit out in the driveway just to see I'm, I'm just to see that. that yeah. you know. Jim, Jim, we've suddenly lost <laughs> control. <laughs> <laughs> you get, you, you and get, Tess and me and my cats. Right. Yeah. You get Alan and Rob together, and you have no idea where it's going to go. Yeah. We got we got trouble now. Yeah. Hey, uh, if there was a uh, mention of the the height of uh, grass in a yard, for instance, as part of this this ordinance. And and I've lived next to some people who don't take care of their yard over the years, and it's an issue. Uh, but it's their property, and what as as. Uh, you know, it's, what are you supposed to do? Well, that's a good question because, you know, owning, owning a community, you know, where mobile homes are, you know, some neighbors don't take care of theirs the way that the other ones do. And mm-hmm. and I've, on my personal side, I've actually tried to go to them and say, look, if you need help, i got to know. You know, let me know, and I'll try to get somebody in here to help you. And, and sometimes, believe it or not, the community itself would come together to if there's an issue that the person can't physically do it or, you know, monetarily can't take care of it, um, you know, there are good people out there that, that mm-hmm. try to help. So, you know, think about your neighbor if, um, you know, there might be a reason why other than I just don't want my neighborhood to look good. There there might be an underlying issue that we have to consider that, um that that's not the reason why the grass isn't cut. So. And, and I didn't get the number of calls that the council did, but mm-hmm. the, the, the few calls that, that I did get was that was the primary sticking point is, you know, what right does the council have to tell me how, you know, when to mow my grass <laughs> and, how, and how high sure. to let it be. And, and I know that, you know, there's always extremes, you know, and, and we've, you know, I live in a in a subdivision. We have, you know, homeowners regulations, and, and we have had instances where, you know, yards have gotten, you know, out of out of control, and we've been able to manage that through the homeowners mm-hmm. association, but not everyone has that, that ability. Um, so, you know, again, it's, it's trying to find that balance between, you know, you know, you know what one neighbor wants and what the other neighbor wants and without infringing on property rights it, it was interesting because i saw in some of the comments it was and i think nate mentioned it too about well if my grass is 10 inches high they're going to come and arrest me but if it's eight inches high it's fine and this is kind of where i think alan you were mentioning once the lawyers get a hold of something and i think too tall grass is a lot like defining pornography i can't give it an exact definition but i know it when i see it <laughs> You know, so I think that's one of those instances when you walk by somebody's yard and the grass is too high, you know it when you see it, right? And, and you know, there, you know, uh, there's there's trends out there where homeowners are letting allowing their lawns to go back to a, a natural state. You know, they're not using fertilizer. They're right. not, you know, they're not worried about the moss that's in their yard, Bill. Oh, yes, <laughs> they're not. I know you are. <laughs> um, so you know, you, you know, again, it's. It, it, it has to do with with you know individual rights and 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 again the council never intended to to you know to impose infringe. yeah infringe on anyone's property rights but bill you know how it is sometimes these things take on a life of their own and it did we're not don't get started on another question <laughs> Amber, we're, we're already two minutes over 
<laughs> yeah. Hey, we got we have to stop here, gentlemen. Thank you both very much for coming in. Sure. Thank, thank you. Thank Anytime. You. Always love appreciated. To come back. Alan, great to see you again. Good seeing you, Rob. You know, I'm gonna if I can, I'm gonna keep milking appearances from you until you're into retirement. I'm I'm, I'm a short timer now. I know. So you know, we're just trying to get you in here as much as we can.